come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. The movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination which you're helping us out with so thank you very yeah, much that for listening to this Our podcast minions. that's right it's mm-hmm. your fault that mm-hmm. we're here these <laughs> are the internet radio superstars michaela sean holly and i'm colin and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by holly me mm, what do we watch tonight tonight we watched Bunraku. Bunraku from what year 2010 mm, i've never heard could of have fooled me this right. movie looks like it could have been 1993 i Dur- feel like the style and the tones. 1993? Really? Yeah, I feel like, yeah. I feel like I think, this yeah, I think she got a strong Mortal Kombat vibe. The Mortal Kombat. So uh, Super Mario that. Brothers. A little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, video gamey we're going with. Okay. A little. There are yeah, some um, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get yeah, into it. It is very video gamey. Yep, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. yeah. Directed by? Guy Moshi. Okay, who is Guy Moshi? Um, unless Has he worked seen... in anime before? Uh, no. Um, unless you've seen like his two other movies, <laughs> Which are? Um, he did a movie ironically called Holly. Oh, in- that's why you picked this. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. Six. laughs> that was that's kind of like his um, his most well known feature. Um, it's about a woman named Holly. Yes, huh? um, it's like child sex trafficking or something. It like is. That. Oh, that's um, a, okay. gross. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. I, I didn't really want to get into what it's oh, about. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you kinda, you kinda, well, it was a heavy you drama. That fact back, didn't you? It's, right. it's a heavy drama, yeah. but it was actually like pretty well received. Yeah. A lot of people really, um, mm-hmm. re- really got into that movie. Um, that's how he landed some of the stars of this movie. Gotcha. Was okay. because they admired his work for that movie so much. Okay. Um, and then he did another movie called um, LX Twenty Forty Eight. Mm. After this, right? After this, yeah. um, and that's really all he's done. <laughs> yeah. What year was that? Oh God, I it's don't like even... 2014, 2014, 2015, while, something right? like that. Yeah. yeah. Was he doing anything commercial wise, music video wise? Was he in this arena? What did he? Not any really. idea what he did before making films? I don't know films? if he was, but when uh, I was looking it up, the production designer mm-hmm. was Alex McDowell, and Alex McDowell apparently, well, you know this story. Okay. He, he, you do? I said, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, he, no, no, you. Well, he, uh, he did the <laughs> no, crow. No, he, you. He was, uh, I think he worked with like the Sex Pistols or something. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and he did a bunch of, uh, like artwork for a bunch of punk bands. Mm-hmm. And then he started working with, uh, like David Fincher's company. And yeah. was he producing, production designing or directing music videos for like Madonna and The Cure and The mm-hmm. Smiths and all yeah, that? Yeah, designing. Yeah. And he uh, started doing movies, and The Crow, I think, was one of his first, right? Mm-hmm. And then now he's since uh, gone on to do, like... He's done a ton of stuff. Yeah. Like, As designing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Production design, production and design. he's... Yeah, I so did. he's production designer on this. So most of what we're seeing is Alex McDowell, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's... I mean, this is, this is Guy Moshi's vision, but Alex McDowell, like, brought it to life. This is... A lot of him. Did Alex McDowell have any association with Sin City? No. No. No, because that was Robert Rodriguez did all that in yeah. Austin. I mean, that's all, yeah, their artwork and everything. Guy Moshi was a big fan of that movie. <laughs> you don't yeah. say. Yeah, shocking, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got Josh Hartnett. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, as, so what we're describing, I guess, is the reason we're talking about this yeah. is because it's a... Uh, like a green screen, shot on green yes. screens or small sets, CGI, yes. world building, experimental, mm-hmm. uh, very visual movie. Yeah, filmed pretty much entirely on green screen right. and small sets in Romania. Um, With a cast of Romanians. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Very uh, high yeah. concept in design and whatnot, very stylized. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think we were, we were saying earlier that this was a time, it's like, what can we do now with green screen? And this is kind of like a experiment. In What's this. the first one you remember? That was like, you know, like all of a sudden computer technology came around and you could set a movie anywhere. 300? 300. Is yeah. My, that's, is my, like, that's like yeah. my milestone. Like that's yeah. The I feel like that just has that look yeah. that, that it just all right. looks fake, you know? Yeah. That was the yeah. first one that I was like, what am I watching? Even the people <laughs> yeah. don't look real in that movie. Probably. Yeah. That was the most highly stylized kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They come yeah. around. Yeah, Sin City came times. after that, right? They were both Frank Miller yeah. stories. Yeah. 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 Sin City came after. When was Sky Captain in the world of tomorrow? Oh, right. God. <laughs> Sky Captain. Oh my God. I was thinking about that when while we were that? watching this Let's movie. See. Let's see. When, <laughs> when was Sky out? Captain? Oh, that had to be 2004. 2004. Okay. See, there's that. Yeah. 
That always that felt like a like we have a bunch of you know well known actors on all green screen aside from Star Wars, yeah, mm-hmm. the new yeah. episodes. That but that guy, time. I think it was it was like Carrie or Kenny Cochran or something like that. I don't remember if I'm recalling his name right, but I don't twins, think he Carrie ever went to go on to anything else because that movie has like a kind of a lifeless feel to it. Like the that movie was panned very widely. I remember it didn't look that. Great, yeah. but not yeah. Yeah. Go over well. It had that kind of, you know, um, like 1930s. Like steampunk vibe almost, but yeah. more yeah, but like, like Zeppelins gray. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where it's the steampunk that kind of just is, everything's kind of muted in that movie. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. It was exciting. But it is kind of, it's it's interesting to watch that one versus like the other ones because you kind of see like, you know, where a director actually does do something. Because, I mean, you've got Angelina Jolie and Jude Law mm-hmm. you know, and people in that movie uh, Giovanni Ribisi, remember? Uh-huh, yes. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like, they all seem kind of lifeless. Where it is like you need a director to actually like breathe some life into these. Yeah. Things. Mm-hmm. Prior to this, what'd you have? You had like the Lawnmower Man, I think, which Alex McDowell also did the production. I think you did. But you know, it, it, where CG kind of wasn't there yet right. to replace mm-hmm. Tron, right? Mm-hmm. Virtuosity. <laughs> <laughs> before cg that's what we were talking before and i was trying to remember like was there movies that you recall that had to find some uh you know like uh, rear projection stuff or you know to kind of take you into like an alternate you know reality cool for situation cool as world. much as i oh, yeah roger yeah. rabbit i know i don't roger like either, cool yeah. Those Even, feel like they are of the set. That's what the first yeah. thing when I saw uh, Josh Hart and I walk out of the saloon, I'm like, I hope there's no animated people in this movie. I, yeah, I was a little worried about like, that. It feels yeah. like any of them could show up. I got a real cool world vibe off this. I was like, no. Ooh. And I also got a very cheap Dick Tracy vibe. That's what, yeah. yes, Dick Tracy oh, for sure. Weird. Yeah. For the colors yes. and the, the colors. The colors, yeah. And, you know, and the, like, the, the, the weird book, shapes of the buildings the comic and stuff. Book come to life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Very Dick Tracy, but like, wish Dick Tracy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the set design stuff reminded me of Cool World because they had yes. kind of the yeah. same uh, when they were using sets. Some stuff that looked like this, mm-hmm. yeah, kind of of that era. That's was, why McKenna's like, this feels like it was done ten years. Yeah, early. that's what I'm saying. Like this, tw- I mean, I get that this is like the the aftershocks of 300 and Sin City, but mm-hmm. it feels earlier than that. No, now I see what you're saying. Yeah. Now that we're talking mm-hmm. about it, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. There was one shot in this where I was like, oh, that's cool, and then I remembered I'd seen it before. But it was there was a character on a phone in a room, and he's on a having a conversation with somebody who's like, you know, many miles away in the mountains. But it looks like they're like looking at each other through the wall. Yeah. Because yeah. they actually were, they, they shine, are, they right? are. Yeah, yeah. Like they shine a light on the, on the back wall. So you, it's tra- uh, Trans- opaque. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it became, you know, when they adjust the lighting, it becomes transparent. You see that they're just on adjacent sets mm-hmm. and they're actually talking to each other through like the scrim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I'm like, Francis Ford Coppola did that in a movie called uh, one from the heart, which was like 1982. Wow. Like that guy was always, you know, thinking about, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of because you look at Dracula, mm-hmm. I guess in some ways, kind of also has that, you know, play with miniatures and yeah, yeah. and background Horse perspective and, and yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So interesting. So there's a lot of <laughs> like, I mean, there's a lot of interesting aspects of this movie. A lot of interesting shots. Like we were saying, it's very stylized. Like uh, it's very strategic. It's very specific throughout the entire movie. No. Yeah. Such as. Such as. I mean, I don't know that I fully have a grasp on this movie, to be honest. Like, I'm not sure what the central thesis of this movie is. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the goal of many of the characters is. That's fair. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of stops to philosophize about violence Mm -hmm. and monologue about violence. And Mm -hmm. then, okay, now let's fight. Narration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is a running narrator through this entire movie, which Mm -hmm. is kind of. unusual yeah distracting i don't know like what was your like sense of it when you were watching it was it good bad yeah i, I feel goes. like i was trying to figure out what was important from what he was saying and that made it i had to make, focus on two things at once almost you know he'll make a joke but then he'll just be like this is the this, this is the serious part and this is the history yeah. of these people but then he's, uh, but then he's commenting on the scene itself you gotta man up. You gotta. This is the moment where you yeah. have to do. It's Mike Patton from yeah. Faith yeah. No More, right? Yeah. Doing the the narration. I, f- I feel like they were trying. I mean, because we saw this in Three Hundred. There was a narrator throughout that whole movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um. So I think that's kind of what they were going for. 
but I don't think he quite understood. Didn't Sin City have a lot of voiceover? I mean, too? Mar- yeah, 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 everybody did a lot of voiceover yeah, on that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. that kind of little hard Nancy boiled. Hardigan. Yeah, I like yeah. That, though, <laughs> yeah. it worked yeah. like you know when you read those, uh, you know, like Mickey Spil- Spillane, you yeah. know, uh, Dashiell mm-hmm. Hammett, mm-hmm. hard boiled. That's kind of the voice, right? Yeah, three hundred, I guess, pulled it off because in the end, it turns out it is like the guy tell. He's been telling the story of the yeah, great three hundred. Right. He's the survivor, and he's telling yeah. the story. Yeah, but this one, it's just like a, a disembodied. Yes, right. and it's like overwritten, maybe. Overwritten, I mean, yeah. And also, it feels like somebody who's trying to do narrator voice, but isn't quite mm-hmm. there. Yeah, it doesn't quite. I don't know. It doesn't feel. It doesn't feel as serious. Again, um, part of that's just the way he sounds. Part of it's the content of what he's saying. But yeah, not as serious as like narrator voice. <laughs> well, what is the setup to this movie? What does narrator tell us about the opening, like ten minute narration or whatever it yeah. takes to set up the world? There's a whole short film at the beginning. Of this. Yeah. There is. There's a whole. Short. It's pretty cool. I like it this is part. Really, yeah. Honestly, this is my favorite part. Like, yeah. This is really cool. I was cool. like, I love all the motion um, graphics and like yeah. it looks like paper cutouts and I. This love was that. really yeah. cool. Um. So obviously the movie is Bunraku, which is a. Um, yeah, do we know what this means? Yes, it is a Japanese art of. Um, like puppet performance, cool. And the short at the beginning, that's Bunraku. Nice. So it was like all of these little creature puppet you hand s- puppets. You could see yeah. that it was multiple people like operating these right, puppets yeah, in black. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, Bunraku. Okay. It's very intricate puppets that's like controlled by multiple people, and it was like a, a very popular theater production in Jap- in Japan for the last like four hundred years. Yeah, that's and it cool. goes with this yeah. movie because this movie is like art itself. Between the Boon Rock, being called Boon Rock, I was singing at the beginning. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Woody Harrelson. Oh, we'll get to who stars in this movie. Yeah. Woody Harrelson's uh, hobby is also doing like a, a, another form of that art in yeah. pop up books. I, that's that's a very childish way to put it, but yes, mm-hmm. that happens to be part of it. Who stars in this yeah. movie? Oh, so we've got some stars in this. Obviously, we said Josh Hartnett mm-hmm. is our. Um, so this is this is a this is a noir spaghetti western samurai. This is East meets West. Movie. Mm-hmm. Like this it's, is Rush Hour. Yeah. This is, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's very like it, it's yeah. It, you can tell that the director has a passion for very specific movies and wanted to like smash yeah, them all into westerns, one. He loves westerns. He loves samurai yeah. movies. Right. And he's like, oh. Yeah, but he also likes noir. Yeah, it was like it's very noir, spaghetti yeah. western, yeah. fantasy, samurai, yes, post apocalyptic, literally everything. It's yeah. all there. Um, so we've got the cowboy, the samurai, and the horseman. So we've got a gunless uh, cowboy. A, a swordless samurai and a horseless horseman is our three characters. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that was the that's the trifecta of this movie. So Josh Hartnett is our cowboy, um, and then Gact. I is, saw that credit. Yeah, yeah. Is our samurai? Is he like a pop star? He is okay, a, yep, 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 okay. Yep, is yes. he? Yeah. I was like, with a single name like that, he has to. Yeah, he's he's like like that. huge. He's yeah. Yeah. Wow. huge in Japan. Yeah, and like, like his face, I was like, he looks like a famous yeah, man. Like, like he, 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 right, like he should be. Like, yeah, even though he's not, well, he wasn't well known here. Like he was a get for this yeah. movie. Yeah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It feels like it because it's yeah. half his movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I bet this plays well, you know, abroad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then. The, the horseman, the bartender is Woody Harrelson. Mm-hmm. So those are our our three primary characters. This movie, and we also have Ron Perlman as the bad guy, the mm-hmm. woodcutter, the woodcutter. That's where the fantasy element comes in. Yes, he's yes. the top of the Mortal Kombat heap, mm-hmm. which yes. is killers. Which, killer number know, one. Killer. He's killer number one, and then we have killers him through ten. Yeah, Let's, Kevin McKidd is killer yeah. killer number two. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his uh, like right hand man. Let's give it up for Ron Perlman not having to wear prosthetics in a movie, though. Thank God. Yay! Yeah. He just gets to I be mean, a human. Right, just a wig <laughs> for and that's once. it. Yeah. Well, he, he had, because uh, I actually had to look up, I'm yeah. like, when was Conan the Barbarian? Yeah. Because yeah. he had that same hair, yeah. mm. but that was the year later. Yeah. I think so. I'm like, ah, oh, that was extension. Well, I read so. his book, and uh, he talks about in the book how like he's like allergic to a lot of the like stuff they use for prosthetics. Oh no! So oh, like wow. it's extra worse on him. And then he said that they developed like a new kind that was like allergen free. And then they so he's like, to, fuck yeah, because no other man has been in more prosthetics. Hey, that's what than I'm saying. Yeah. Ronald and then he said that they recalled it because it was like bad for the environment. So like, like he had to go back to square one of like using sushi. He's so like, like anytime he's not in makeup, I'm like, oh, what an easy day for Ron. He's Perlman. like, can we just use it for me? Yeah, like, I, I, I'm the only one who needs it. Isn't yeah. that right. bad for the environment if it's just on it, me? Right. Special request to Congress. Didn't he? Um, 
he was back because when you're saying that, I'm like, I'm old enough to remember when he was Beauty and the Beast, which is prosthetic still. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, uh, loves, well, just so loves cats. Yeah. you know, make sure that the kids at home, Beauty and the Beast, it was like this full prosthetic. Yeah, thing he had to cat wear. face. But everybody probably remembers him from Hellboy. When you're yeah. talking mm-hmm. about this, the prosthetics yeah. thing, didn't he dress up as Hellboy, like full prosthetics yeah. for like a Make a Wish yeah. or something like that? Yeah, yeah. the dude powers it through it. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a trooper. He probably just pumps up on Benadryl or something before he does it. Right? Sure. But, yeah, yeah, but that's why Sons of Anarchy must have been a treat for him. Like eight seasons of a TV show where he just had to wear a leather vest. Like yeah. that's right? nothing yeah. compared to what he's been through, you know? Yeah. He goes to the makeup trailer and they're like, oh, it's only going to take about an hour to he's like, like, oh shit, really? An hour? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still find it amazing he was in a cat movie not dressed as a cat. I'm looking at you. Sleepwalkers. Sleepwalkers. <laughs> yep, I, that is yeah. wild. I think that yeah. was the first time I ever saw him not in prosthetics. Yeah. That's right, because he was in... Uh, it was a quest for fire. He was, yes. Uh, yeah, he was yes. in the, quest for fire. Uh, uh, the island movie. The island of Dr. Moreau. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Too. yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Ron Perlman's had what his, a career. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and Demi Moore is also in this. True. Sure. Yes. Very small Second. role. Yeah. Very small role. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore, this is their first appearance together since Indecent Proposal. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. They had not worked together <laughs> since that movie. Yeah. Um, and both of them agreed to do this because they liked his work on Holly. Oh, so okay. that's how that's okay. how he got Woody Harrelson to be more for this. Okay, yeah. See, at this point, I have seen uh, more um, like Chinese martial arts movies than I ever expected that I would have, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh-huh. this does have that kind of like it really feels like a westerner making a chinese kung fu movie yes and then they're bringing in the you know and then every once in a while you see like chinese or japanese filmmakers making like a western mm-hmm. there's this remake of unforgiven what that has uh are you serious i didn't know it's called unforgiven and, it's else. called unforgiven and it's japanese no, and i don't think it ever came out here anybody in it yes and i'm all of a sudden, forgot the guy who was Michaela's on the case. Raz al Ghul, the, the, the fake Raz al Ghul. Oh, Ken Watanabe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I, I mean, wouldn't watch okay, it. It doesn't forgiven? look terrible. I'm going to say it I know, doesn't it look looked terrible. pretty good. I was like, I yeah. wanted to see it. As a Western it, or as. It's a, it's a Western. Yeah. Let, here, let me show you the poster. That will answer a lot of your questions, I feel like. It's like the same movie, but it's with different actors. Yeah. So I'm kind of into that. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm down with that. Yeah. I'll watch that. I like Unforgiven. Yeah. yeah. I'm down for that. Hell yeah. I like what was the Sukiyaki Western Django? Yeah. Uh, yeah with the Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. like shows up in that one. But yeah. So this is kind of that blending of, but I mean, it really does. I think it would probably appeal more to like you if you're listening to this and you have that kind of frame of reference. This is probably going to be more like you know, the movie mm-hmm. will appeal more to you because that's yeah, you remember, you know, yeah. what we should bring this show. Mm-hmm. You remember when the RZA did the man with the iron fist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should do that Didn't one. Quentin Tarantino present. He produced it. Yeah yeah. 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 Okay. I'll put that one I, was, I thought you were going to say ghost dog. <laughs> A ghost dog is a great yeah, fucking that's movie. I thought you, that's yeah. I thought you were going Is it that. great? It's great. Yeah, it's okay. Like ghost that's dog. like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Criterion. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay, so mm-hmm. the, the, okay, so the narrator. Right. Front, so what is yeah. the so world? This is that, yeah. post-apocalyptic. Uh, man has destroyed the world with their obsession with weapons and destruction. Yeah, a great um, little animation. Of the yeah, there is. Yeah. The, the, I always the, love this when they when they want it. I like it. That paper cutout art of. And this is a general theme good. throughout the movie, and yes. I, I kind of dig it. I'm no, into it. Good. Yeah, uh, it's a good way to explain everything, but without having to, you know, like b- better than somebody trying to make it look real and use CGI and everything. They, use, yeah. it, they use a specific art form to I like do it. it. I like it better than a flashback and better than an exposition. That yes. was my favorite yeah. thing about the Candyman remake. Is instead right. of flashbacks, anytime someone was like, "You don't know about Candyman," they especially, would just cut to the paper cutouts telling. Especially the Especially when you're telling That's a story cool, yeah. that is uh, legend at this point or history yeah. at this point, it gives more to it. It's just like it's not a precise thing. It's kind of more than that it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. it makes it feel you know uh bigger and maybe it's not necessarily every fact mm-hmm. of it is true but it's it's mm-hmm. a great looks like a great story mm-hmm. and it always yeah. comes across that you're way. saying the theme carries through it's like a lot of scene transitions seem to be like it always looks like a pop-up book yes um, yeah. unfolding yeah. Mm-hmm. sometimes it's straight comic book warriors type yeah. thing just 
Yeah, oh, there's ca- mm-hmm. the, all the subtitles are done in like little comic books. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. that. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's really cool. And I like that they bolded like the important words. Yes. Like that, yeah. they, they, like almost like the emphasis for delivery was bolded in the words too, which mm-hmm. I thought was interesting. Was good. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Very good artistic flourishes. So really, the, good job, production I, design. I know, Woo! right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this post-apocalyptic world, the the survivors of the world rebuild and decide that they're done with weapons, they're done with destruction, they want to rebuild in a peaceful place. So they're weapons, done with guns. Mostly they're done with guns, yeah. not that's weapons. What, that's guns. what we're getting. That's yeah. what we're getting at. Yeah. So they, yeah, they, they, they say we've fall, gone. We yeah. went from swords to guns, and then back to well, they, swords. Yeah. yeah. The, the whole thing is they they ban guns. But as the message of the movie goes, like, man will never stop destructing. Right. No, yeah. it's inherently in our nature yeah. to destroy mm-hmm. ourselves, there so are, that will continue to go on. There are more ways to kill a man than there is to make love. So mm-hmm. And to bake make bread. bread. And yeah. to bake yeah. bread, yeah. Yeah. The, so, but that's the thing. I mean, just, it, it, so the fantasy of it is, like, so no one ever brings a gun into the movie. Right. Um, the movie, then, is all set on these, like, sets with... Um, like a lot of color mm-hmm. takes place in Westworld, I think is the name of it, right? And all of these different uh, factions mm-hmm. all converge here because they're all after something in the town, mm-hmm. right? Josh Hartnett is the, what's his character? The drifter is the, the drifter, credit, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's, and so he's like cowboy dude. And then you got yeah. uh, Samurai dude, mm-hmm. which is gacked, right? Yes. And uh, he's, we know he's after what? He's after a medallion that's um, been in yeah. his family for generations, thousands of years. Mm-hmm. It means a lot to him. A dragon medallion. A mm-hmm. necklace, as the cowboy would put it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is where I start squinting at this movie, because I'm like, <laughs> I've heard this story a thousand <laughs> times. You know, I'm just like, oh, here we go. You know, yeah. like, I, But I do like that they call it out, though, because I do like when Josh Arnett's like, you're going to throw your whole life away over a medallion? I was like, yeah. please, yes, please yeah. speak for the audience in this situation. Well, I was about honor. <laughs> yeah, but well, I guess that's what they're going for because I was sitting there going like, well, what's going to be the payoff to mm-hmm. this, right? Mm-hmm. And I was kind of carefully watching that. And then eventually, you know, I think Josh Hartnett asks, uh, is it Yoshi? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, Yoshi. the character that Gak plays, Gak plays uh, you know, like, what's so special about the medallion? It's like, well, you wouldn't understand. I'm like, okay, then we got a MacGuffin. Yeah. You know, yeah. it really doesn't matter the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what it is. I'm assuming they got it from, you know, killing a relative or, you know, it's like the destruction of the town or, you know, something. They say, I can't they, Yeah, they allude to it because um, he's, Yoshi's talking with his uncle about how, you know, his dad's like final wish was for him to get this medallion back for his family's honor. And he doesn't want to do it in any way that would dishonor his family. He doesn't want to do it in a cheap way or in, like stab anyone in the back kind of way. Mm. Um, so they allude to that it was his father's dying wish. So clearly it was stolen either from his dad or someone in the family. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then who's Woody Harrelson in this mix? The horseman. The and bartender. The, the wise bartender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also the getaway driver. Yeah. So Because he's the horseman. What is his... <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I guess it, from... I the beginning of the movie, you know, you get to see, well, I think uh, Kevin McKidd's character, uh, killer number two, like gets a <laughs> lot more mm-hmm. focus at this point. So we think like he's a bigger deal. I guess he is. He's like, I mean, it even ends up that way kind of in what Ron Perlman says later on in the movie. It's like, you're basically running things yeah. at this point. So he is like, I mean, he is second command. He is basically the big bad but with Ron Perlman <laughs> hovering over him. Yeah, you know okay. what I mean? Right. And so, Kevin McKidd and his squad of the nine killers all wear these like red zoot suits and yeah. fucking berets. Well, the henchmen wear and the they, red zoot yeah. suits. The nine killers are kind of different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Things. They're, They're not given too much spotlight because they kind of pop in and pop out of the movie and they die rather quickly. <laughs> Um, it's like a standard management position where everyone has to wear <laughs> uniforms except for the manager. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. But I do like kind of their system. It's like there is the the ten killers, and in order to move up in that, they have to challenge each other at a certain point if or they want die. to move, or die or yeah. move up yeah. in the ranks. It is I, I like the idea of the system. Mm-hmm. So but they look like they're in Dick Tracy, and everyone, you know, they so do. they look yeah. different. Yeah, but they're yeah. very noticeable in this movie compared to everybody else. So, mm-hmm. and they're part of. Um, you know, the the government faction, right? I think, because oh, basically Ron Perlman is running yeah. the show. Nicola. He's like the... Nicola? Nicola, yeah. Nicola, yeah. So he's like a warlord, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Who the, the most powerful man east of the Pacific? The Atlantic. 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 I actually thought that was kind of... Like, I mean, it's... 
you know, it's not very like sketched in, but it was like, he's the guy who is like, I am so badass that I've killed everyone mm-hmm. yeah. and anyone who comes against me, I can beat them mm-hmm. and I can't go anywhere because everybody knows who I am. And so I can't right. even go to a restaurant. So I got have this my- one fucking restaurant <laughs> he needs, like, I can't he, go to. He needs some Saddam Hussein type dupes to run around and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what he, he needs. Does. I'm surprised that didn't come into this movie. Yeah. You know? But I thought they were talking about because uh, he has a relationship with Demi Moore. She's a courtesan, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's pregnant with his kid. And I thought he said that because he wears this costume which makes him look like raiden from yeah. mortal Kombat, he can actually go out in public and nobody knows you know because he was like she'll was, notice her but not him being right yeah there. yeah, yeah. He's she like, has i've reputation. been right next to you yeah, and yeah. you know they talk to you and you know i'm right there so it's like then he can go right. out right mm-hmm. right also yeah. is he is there a problem with how he's running things because that movie way. doesn't seem to make it clear like why I, I guess I don't. I mean, well, I guess it's revealed. Yeah, in the yeah, I mean, they, they, with, but uh, like, yeah. why does this guy need to be taken out? They kind of make it seem like it's like a mafia situation yeah. where, yeah. like, all of the local businesses are controlled by the well, mafia. And also, they, they make their payments every month. Like, it is a yeah. mafia. Like, he yeah. is controlling all of them, making them pay yeah. so that mm-hmm. you know for their uh, protection. Basically, at that mm-hmm. point, it's like you pay us, and you won't get hurt. So yeah. there's like a subplot in which the people want to elect the general. There's a general like running for election. With very one like, of them. That's also a secret island where the proletariat uh, ha- has been uh, training for years to rise up and have a rebellion against all of this. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's part of the story. So it is not exactly great under his rule. Right. I guess I just didn't see the evidence of that. Right. Like there was no demolition man type scene where you see all the people living underground and like trying to like you know I guess right. like we we come you know, in. It's just kind of the it's the status quo. Well, we don't see what got him there. Well, maybe. especially because at the end of the movie when it's revealed like. Josh Hartnett's motivation for everything. It, it's, it's a personal thing. It's, it has both nothing to do. Yeah. It's exactly. So that's why I'm like, so this was just a personal beef. They both had. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, uh, it but, wasn't but some sort of get, for the greater good. Right. Situation. But, but they, well, they get into, I think that they, they merge. They don't want it to. Cause Josh Hartnett could uh, give a shit. He's just like, I'm in this for myself. And so is the other guy, but Woody Harrelson, but they can also help everyone in the process of like, yeah. all right, fuck it, we can. And do that, that's that where well. Woody Harrelson, right? He's the link to that. Yes. He's like, I work here, and you know, I basically, fight so that I can keep mm-hmm. serving the drinks. Yeah, he keeps on saying like, you're always gonna meet someone who's you know more powerful than you, and yeah. so he knows where his place mm-hmm. is. Basically, it's like I can't fight this myself. I'm not that good of a fighter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fights always happen in my. He bar. tried. I think this, at certain that's, point, that's why he limps now. <laughs> yeah. It's relatable when you put it like that because, like, that's who I would be in in this type of movie. I would be someone who's like, can't do anything about this. Got to wait for someone to come along and fix it for me. You know, yeah. like. And eventually they do. Yes. They both walk into his bar. Mm-hmm. One, uh, you know, Josh Hartnett comes in and starts kicking ass. And, and well, he starts with him. <laughs> starts doing magic. card tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, card tricks and shit. Um, and his card tricks. And uh, the samurai, Yoshi, he comes mm-hmm. in and uh, starts getting in a fight also. Cause mm-hmm. He says uh, the wrong word in, in the bar. He yeah. says uh, Naruto. Nicola. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, no. Here we go. I knew it was wrong. Like Naruto, I that's like an anime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so he's got to face down the guys. And we've already set up that Kevin McKidd is like a kind of a, he struck me his, uh, it's, he's in the zoot suit, but like a lot, the, the fight scenes are choreographed like a musical number. Yeah. He's supposed yeah. to be like a violent Gene Kelly. Yeah. There you go. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's I, like yeah. a dancer. Yeah. You know? The sound effects are working overtime. Anytime I, I kind of love that somebody. accentually. Like the sound effects throughout the entire movie are working overtime. Every yeah. time uh, mm-hmm. Josh Hartnett rims his hat, you hear the, the, the spinning of the six shooter. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's is, some though that are out of place compared to others. Uh, when they're having a car chase and there's fucking Mario Kart sound effects. I mean, I, kind of, I don't, you're right that I don't know if it necessarily fits. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know I what like that's it. trying to I didn't to have really have a problem it. with it. It, yeah, uh, it was, it was towing into having... Scott Pilgrim territory for it me. Was, I did not I know you that. all hate yes, Scott Pilgrim, yes. but I got a lot of that <laughs> yeah. sense from the I was getting yeah. flashbacks, and I was like, if, does, if yes. anybody else's name pops on screen introducing who they are, I'm going to flip this table. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's yeah, because like, it was doing that, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, the killers. killers. And I was like, oh, yeah. no, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah. 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 they got yeah. little CGI markers flipping around. I like that because they're like... I liked it in Gotti. 
Oh, oh, yeah. I liked when Gotti did Another it. Another comic book movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is this based on a comic book? No. Okay. No, but everything, everything style wise was it's, brought it's from based, that. It's, it's based grabbed on, from yeah. a bunch of comic books. It's based books, on the yeah. comic book in Guy Moshi's head. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, there was a, a scene where you admire, I guess, the effort that was put into making it. It was a, I think I counted four levels of uh, like hallway fight scene, right? Yes. Where yes. it was like, uh, so I don't know. It's, how like, to a, it's like a Donkey Kong yes. level. Yes. yes, it's like a cross it's section of the building down, where you yeah. see Josh Hartnett go down. Yeah, he's going left to right. It's like yeah. a side scroll left to right yeah. down uh, downstairs to the next level of the fight guys, knocking them over down another level. It's and very, they were using some video, that's video, game, the video sound game effects. Game. Yes, and I was like, oh, why? This is a lot. I liked it. It's a nice stylized it was a fight choice. scene. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had seen uh, Old Boy also did a, mm-hmm. a fight scene like that, but that was just in like a, but it was a hallway. Yeah. yeah, you get the idea. It's mm-hmm. like a side scroller right. video yeah, game, yeah. you know. But I mean, it was impressive to watch. I mean, mm-hmm. I wonder know. if that was all one take. It looked like it. Yeah. It did. Yeah, but I always wonder if there's a cut anywhere. But it did look like it. I think Josh Hartnett might have found his like niche here, right? Like Josh Hartnett s- loves this strong, silent type. Is loves this his type vibe, of movie. I think. Yeah, yes, I, he, he was the first one signed for this movie. Yeah, <laughs> I just I don't <laughs> like, know. Hell yeah! Just thinking about he does it well though. Like he pulls it <laughs> off. He's good at those characters. I know. I'm surprised at how how good I found him in this movie, but he also doesn't say a lot. And it's a lot of like sideways glances and squinting yeah. and tough right. guy shit, but you know? He must be enjoying that because he looks good in every shot. Which is, this is the an best actor, he's looked in a to, movie. You have to really oh, love the lighting. That. The lighting, the lighting makes is, them look badass yeah, in yeah, every yeah, shot. Yeah. This is a good look for him yes, in this movie. Yeah, this it, like, it's like his, drifter look. It's is like good his look perfect for him. look. Yeah, because he's also but like he's got the facial hair. He's got the little mustache. He looks like a little baby right? Ethan Hawke a little bit. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. when he's yeah. fighting the other cowboy, I'm like, is that Ethan Hawke? I thought it was too. Why is Ethan Hawke in this? And I was like, is that? And I kept. I was looking. I was like, is he fighting Ethan Hawke? Because Ethan Hawke shows up in weird fucking places sometimes. And he so, would. He would yeah. feel like the kind of yeah. other version of that. Did you see uh, Penny Dreadful, the yeah. Showtime show? Because yeah. isn't this basically his look from kind of yeah. from that? Yeah. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's obviously wearing more like a three piece yeah. suit in that, but it's a very similar. Facial Anytime look. he has a normal haircut, I'm like, okay, we get, we won, we won, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> has this man ever had a normal haircut? I mean, I mean he started out a, with an abnormal haircut. This in is H2O. an upgrade from those, the, from the faculty and the H2O haircut. Yeah. Like, well, when he took upgrade. his head off at the beginning of this, and wow, yeah. Like, wham, yeah. all over the front. Um, okay, and uh, so all right, so these these two, so we we've established that the the Kevin McKid and Ron Perlman shadowy behind him rule the town. Mm-hmm. These two guys come in. They of course have to fight each other, right? Under the guidance or supervision of the horseman. Yeah. Right. What's his character's name? Woody Harrelson. Barkeep? He's just I don't bar- think he bartender. Has one. Bar- I mean, uh, we could bartender? look this up. No, bartender. It, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, just bartender. Bartender. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Drifter, bartender, right. and Yoshi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's all you need to be. Um, and so he supervises He's that fun. scene where they have to uh, duke it out because that's mm-hmm. basically say, okay, these two guys are the best fighters mm-hmm. that exist, and so now we're going to put them against like all these other guys, right? For the mm-hmm. rest of the movie, they're going to take yes. on a squad of people at the same time, but eventually it's going to be like every martial arts movie: you get paired off against the guy who tests your limits to the mm-hmm. yes the full extent. And then against the warlord, who's like just sitting there being bored, waiting for somebody to challenge Just him. tending his garden. <laughs> right. This is always like, I'm, you see this story a lot. You know, he's been in power forever. It's just like, it's been so long since I've had someone to challenge me. I've been playing a lot of Spider-Man 2 lately. It's just like Craven the Hunter <laughs> coming in. He's just like, I've just been waiting for the ultimate hunt to make yeah. me feel alive. And then they die. Yeah. The, um, I guess, um. This movie's so, so dense, I keep forgetting where we're at. So, like, yeah, okay. So, I mean, we're kind of jumping ahead maybe a little bit. But definitely. We need, I need to talk about this. Is, was Josh Hartnett's dad the one that ruled prior to Ron Perlman? Is that, like is that what we're getting at? I think it, well, it, so. Like, well, this was my one. This is my like question. He, at the reveal Ron at the Perlman end. killed his dad. Yeah. Right, because the, the one who told him right? that was yeah. my father. Yeah. Well, so the one who like told him what? 
The one who told him that there's always someone more powerful than you. Okay. Yeah. So what I was confused by, because okay. what I was, oh, I was, A, I'm like, Josh Hartnett is going to end up being his son. That That's where played, I thought it was right? going to, especially because uh, Ron Perlman kept calling him son. Yeah, kept calling yeah. him Right. Son. There was a lot. And then for a I'm moment sure there, son, I thought, yeah. well, there was a moment there I thought, like, is he Woody Harrelson's son? Like, right. He feels like somebody's son here. Because what is Woody Harrelson? He's the one I think that we first hear that eventually that. you're going to run into someone more powerful than you. And right. I think yeah. he repeats it maybe. He then does. Ron, yeah. Which yeah. is why I thought so. I'm like, well, he said it. Is he his son? It's like, well, uh. because then later on he says, you know, I was young, but I, I was around when your dad was. And right. I remember him. Woody Harrelson said yeah. that. Yeah. So, right, yeah, right, I guess right. how are you to take that? It's like, did so Woody he Harrelson he challenge before. Josh Hartnett's dad? Or he challenged um, Nicole. Yeah, Woody Harrelson yeah. did challenge someone Woody and learned his place, is what he said. Yeah, he challenged Ron Perlman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, some point, Josh Hartnett's dad did and lost. Mm -hmm. And so, this is a revenge odyssey for him. Yeah. yeah for that, Josh I mean, Wherever I mean, the placement honestly, of his dad is. All we get is before. like. He says that's his dad, and there's no more information. No, we so never. Yeah, we don't know anything about that. That's why I was like, I was kind of let down by I that, hate that reveal. Plot. Yeah, I at did the not end, care it's like that. you know, you kill, you know, basically. What, no, there should have been like a, a flashback where Ron Perlman kills a dude, and then at the end of the movie, we see that flashback again, and it's the or reveal. just don't or if, uh, something. What, but you know, more information. I think. I don't know. Do you need to know more than like? Then the, I mean, it, so it, just it, it feels it like an more, afterthought because it wasn't you know? exactly clear when he said it. Yeah. Maybe something a little more, but you know, well, we I mean, we ultimately do get it. It's going off of because yeah, I mean the the, th the scenes you know when we're talking about this, I'm like, well, what movie has done it? And I'm like, well, the Quick and the Dead did it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But the Quick and the Dead was ripping off uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, the West the yeah. Charles Bronson character. But you do get the flashback, yeah, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's like Henry Fonda killed his dad, yeah, and mm -hmm. so that's right. why he's like, you know, and they basically recreate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what you need, I think, in order to sell. Like, okay, fine. You can't just in the very end go like, and you know, it why was are my you dad. here? Who are you? And it's a mystery the entire to the yeah. fucking last scene. And then it's like basically you kill my dad. You should mm -hmm. right at this point you should yeah. be able to point to a character we've seen and be like, oh, that was his dad mm -hmm. who got killed. That's how it's usually set up. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Or I guess that's the you know the the flashback always kind of imparts to you the viewer that like it's like oh god that's horrible you know how his dad died mm -hmm. and the kid saw it you know right right mm -hmm. and so you kind of get that catharsis that we've sure. killed the bad because I remember the the trauma right right mm -hmm. and you, you don't, don't have, right if you don't have <laughs> yeah. to do this but if you're gonna tell this story the way they told it in this it doesn't help it that help. we know literally nothing about Josh Hartnett's character this entire movie nothing like but we I, learn I think nothing about him I think that's purposeful though because it's very much like the spaghetti western where it's just like the lone cowboy comes into town saves the day and leaves like you don't really n need to know anything about him yeah that's why i <laughs> feel so out of place that they throw in oh i'm avenging my dad at the yeah. very last second because we didn't yeah. know anything up until this point and then in the final moments of the movie you're going to give us a little nugget about him it's right. just mm -hmm. it would be it would be different maybe if he arrived in the town and hadn't planned on going after him yeah and then ended up doing it just because he saw the injustice yes but he comes in with a purpose mm -hmm. yes and i think that's the difference mm -hmm. yeah because i think now that you know you said that about the spaghetti westerns and obviously we're thinking primarily the clint eastwood stuff but yeah. it's mm -hmm. like he has no personal attachment to anything he's just an opportunist in everything right? yeah yeah he's yeah, never yeah motivated by by revenge i think whenever it is it's like it's always because of this thing in the past that eventually the filmmaker shows mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. this is what's actually like driving their hatred and their you know mm -hmm. this is why they're pointed in this right. direction at least yoshi mm -hmm. has a medallion so yeah what's yes. his so <laughs> well i guess we've established we don't know yeah. that we don't you know you, you're never going to know the significance of the medallion we just have to get the medallion yeah. back MacGuffin. That's a uh, family honor. That, that it's, like, literally, literally yeah. it's, a, it's a secret, Colin. You wouldn't understand. You wouldn't right. understand. It's yeah. said by two people at the same time. <laughs> but again, then you can't feel that one either. Exactly. You know, so, right. I'm at arm's length from, so like, from everybody in this movie. Yeah. yeah true. <laughs> um, this movie's emotionally unavailable to me. Yeah. It just it wants to keep me away. <laughs> but it's going to give you style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of style. A lot of yeah. fight scenes. Uh, many, many fight scenes. And a, kind of a, I don't know, the atmosphere. There's a lot of extras running around. Yeah. 
A um, lot. You do get some, like scenes in the streets of you know the, the the city folk and how they're living and you know what is it like? What's this town Westworld? What's it like? Uh, it feels like I mean, there's obviously conflict between we see the red suits and the people who live in these towns. Who... I wish there was more than just one scene where we got the little red suits. Red. That was that was see, funny. See, little flirt like red because that's yeah, what that was funny. That might just be yeah. something you sing when they keep mentioning the red like red suits. Yeah. I wanted that to like, be oh, a continuous funny. thing throughout the movie, but they only do it the one time. Right. Yeah. If you're and gonna the, do the video game shit lean all the way in you know like don't yeah. just dip in dip out just just commit to it they, but they only do one thing each time I yeah think is what it is. Mm-hmm. they don't necessarily repeat mm-hmm. it but yeah there are certain mm-hmm. things you're like ah that's funny mm-hmm. but i think they're maybe smart enough not to overuse it maybe we'd be sitting here going they did that a lot <laughs> yeah, i mean possible lot. yeah maybe possible, yeah. maybe so maybe on like the fact that we remember it and enjoy it is yeah. a good they're like oh good stick with that we yeah, don't want anything yeah. else we that's don't want you to true. hate it i could use a couple more <laughs> so <laughs> it would have been fun what was the point of Demi Moore in this movie? Right. Mm-hmm. So for Woody Harrelson, yeah. I kept of... forgetting she was in this movie because she was so barely in it. Right. So but I, she I may be, she was... but she may not be necessarily important until that moment with Woody Harrelson. Right. Because it's kind of, I mean, we all. I mean, we figured it out early. Oh yeah. On who she it was. Well, let's way, like, way, yeah. 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 We figured it out yeah. very early. Let's yeah. put it this way: she's ornamental to the men. Yeah. Technically, yeah. in this movie. I mean, yeah. So she was with Woody Harrelson until Ron Perlman came along and basically. Oh, right. So when he f- they fought and he got injured and yes. now there's a limb, she's like, he, she found a better provider. Well, I mean, but really what seems to have happened is she was like, spare him and I'll come with you. Like, yes. There's yeah. that but there's this well. whole subplot about burning the brothel down and I'm supposed to care about these people I've spent two seconds That's, with. Yeah, right. I know. That, uh, that the... felt like. Caring yeah. The- Baby of the, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. but again, that's but, more for him. To, right, and like, the, the reputation is that she is his whore, but she wants to be seen as legitimate, especially yeah. if she's gonna. But he's never recognized her as that, especially if she's gonna have his child. But he says that yeah. he wants to, but because of his position, he can't actually like go out in public or whatever. And yeah, it's like because I can't remember if he was making promises to her. Like we're getting toward the end where. I'm getting to that age yeah. where I can't keep doing this, and so I'm going to make you legitimate, basically. So, uh, yeah, it feels like I heard but that. Also, but it I'm, also felt like more he just wanted the baby out of her. Like he just wanted she. Uh, he just wanted an heir, not necessarily. He wanted. That's where the to, fantasy uh, element comes in too. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he wanted to make her legitimate. I don't think he ever had any intention to do so. He was more concerned about the air oh so it's like dune where he's like i'm not gonna marry you but you can have my special baby for me right max where he's uh immortal joe yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. which i don't know like in this post-apocalyptic world i was like does it even matter that they're not married right (laughs) this guy this guy's called the woodcutter and he chaps wood right what is your his personality like what is your reputation that this would matter to that point like it it Really, You're a lumberjack think, with dreads. Like, yeah, do we really care? Gonna really think no, different of you. But he says that he says a woman like her is an Achilles because he loves her. Yes. So basically, if they it's were, a weakness. It, yeah, because they can get to her. Yeah, mm-hmm. to get to him. And so oh, he can't sure, do yeah. that. So if he's she's constantly seen as just quote unquote his whore in the movie. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. it is not an advantage for anyone else. That's right. true. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So. How does Josh Hartnett plan to get to his arch nemesis, which we eventually figure out that that's yeah. what, what's going on? A card game. Poker. Okay. Gotta love yeah, poker. The, he only leaves his house to get Chinese food or Japanese food and to play poker once a week. The yep. warlord. Yeah. Does. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doesn't time sound horrible. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. But he's this bored. sounds he's like bored. a pretty ah! good He's horribly yeah. bored. This sounds fun. This is, it's like this once a week. It's just yeah. like I live the rest yeah. of my life and then come here once I, a week. I work from home. This is not too, it's not too terribly different from my <laughs> life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Tell me once a week I get to go to have Japanese out. food and go play cards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm and down. He, he's complaining about this lifestyle. Yeah, shut up, dude. Yeah. Although yeah. he's, he's probably a, been doing it for he's 15 been doing years. Yeah. He's got a really nice garden. Again, right. But he hung us to feel He hung us to feel alive again. I mean, is there a reason he can't send like one of his entourage out to bring him a different restaurant's food back? Or is this like, wait, is this another Saddam Hussein thing where he has to have people like taste test his food for well, him to make sure it's not poison? Well, he said that he only likes this restaurant. Right, okay. someone he likes. Yeah. Okay, well, point. that's his problem then. Right, like, so, like, yeah. Yeah. like don't kill everybody. Yeah. Find someone who can open up a different I thought it was like a safety like. thing of like, I can't eat anywhere else because yeah. some shit might happen it's to like, me. It's like, we'll you know? stop killing people. People are probably scared to open a business. Yeah. 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 There's probably really great cooks in this town, and he has he no idea. He probably put a lot of out of business with his payments that he requires right? yeah. every well, week. 
a lot of the movie. Like you killed the best pizza. He's guy. crushing the local businesses. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, the brick of a pizza guy. You murdered him last yeah. week. So they kill. So sushi I mean, forever for you, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And all the killers. Like if you, you know, it's that whole, you know, honor thing. If you mess, you pick a target and you miss, then you know they right. kill you. And it's like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, no second chances. Uh, a lot of the yeah. movie does seem to revolve around Josh Hartnett getting to this card game so he can oh my God. So confront, yeah. uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 well, he has Nicola. to like. Yeah. He has to like earn his right to get into the card game. Yeah, even, we don't let strangers you know? at this card. He's mm-hmm. got to borrow the money from Yoshi because yeah, Yoshi's got so, so he can actually get into the card yeah, game. It's a and fifty thousand dollar buy in. Mm-hmm. And then when he gets there, uh, Nicole is not there. There's this whole like he's, complicated. Yeah, he's there, but he's like hidden behind a wall. Yeah, and only yeah. shown on like sixteen millimeter projection. Right, and yeah. there's a very intricate connection that for him to play the game. There's a camera yeah. on the. I was guy. like, there's a very intricate a represent- cheating system. So yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. He's got a representative that he's got to show cards to on a camera that would not be connected <laughs> digitally to whatever he could see. I mean, you know, again, stylized mm-hmm. and shit. There's, yeah, he's got a henchman looking over the card game to give him the advantage. Yet, like steampunk surveillance. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's but weird Josh that Hartnett poker still is still the same in this universe. Don't and you know, it's, I, I just think love it. I think poker is forever. I <laughs> think that that's like a benefit to the audience that it is. But I was just kind of surprised with how weird this movie is that it didn't go like full Star Wars and do like you know Sabacc or some made up game that we had never even heard of. It so. was because well, we that's had, the Western yeah. element. Yeah. We had to be able to understand the card trick. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. True. And you know, cards have been around forever. Yeah, because yeah. that's how he wins, ultimately. And then mm-hmm. since he wins, which is something that Ron Perlman has never had, you know, somebody yeah. beat him, yep. he accepts uh, a face-to-face meeting mm-hmm. in a courtyard, mm-hmm. but then that's a trap, uh, of course. and all the dudes show up. And the newsies show up. Yeah, Billy Joe Armstrong and his yeah and his this didn't care. Or... They, they are giggling and jumping around like theater majors. It's just... very, like... You, you, ever see, you ever see Six Flags, like the Haunted Nights, where you get the people in character who come out sliding on the ground and sparks? Well, it's, and shit. it's very. Sure. This is more whimsical than that, though. It's very yeah. Batman Returns. Yeah. It's like, like the, the Lost the, Boys the, were the evil. Penguin's henchmen. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, like circus it's the circus. Yeah, it's yeah. Like penguin henchmen. Actually, yeah. Were they circus perform? Okay, yes, because so, they literally go to the circus. They go into the circus. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where they uh, get high Because all the other henchmen are dead, so eventually he recruits, Ron Perlman recruits the circus people. Yeah. All the. So there's the local color is these different, like, games. Gangs. Like yeah. the first guys feel like Russian mobsters, yeah, mm-hmm. right. And then uh, eventually, and then you got the zoot suit guys. It's you like the, the warriors guys. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, you get to the circus. People. Where is Gregory yeah. Scott coming? Right. I know <laughs> where he should have been leading one of these gangs. He already did 100%. it on his resume in Batman <laughs> Return. Yeah, yeah. So yes. he did. What? How's Yoshi gonna gonna? What's his path to solving his? I mean, he's trying to protect his uncle and his cousin at this point. His cousin gets kidnapped. They own mm-hmm. the, the restaurant where... Uh, Ron Perlman's favorite restaurant. Yeah, the only restaurant that he likes. Yeah. yeah. And then that gets closed because of the violence that takes place there right. or whatever. And so, Again, it's your henchman's fault. And he gets yeah. arrested at some point, and there's this big like uh, breakout sequence where they got to bust him out of jail. Yeah. yeah. This Woody is Harrelson and Josh Hartnett bust him out of jail. Yep. Yeah. And the then, yep. but how is he intending to, I guess that's what I'm saying. If Josh Harton is like, I know yeah. how I'm getting to my target. I'm going to get him in the, I've got this card trick. I'm going to get into this game. Mm-hmm. I'm going to lure mm-hmm. him into a spot where I can attack him. Uh, how is Yoshi getting to, well, he doesn't even know where the medallion is. He's right. like, right. He's looking right. for information. Yeah. And you know, yeah, trying he's to like that 10 out. And, steps behind Josh Harton. Right. And okay. Josh Harton's yeah. like. I can help you with that. Yeah, because Josh Hartnett's like, oh, I've seen that medallion. <laughs> right, but yeah. you need to give me money so that yeah. I can go and talk to these people. And Yoshi's like, why do I need you to negotiate for me? Yoshi's just like, I don't need help. A samurai. Mm-hmm. Without a sword. Without a sword. Without a sword. Eventually, Eventually he gets, he gets, a, gets sword. a sword. And yeah. a bow and arrow. And- mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, indeed. So it feels like, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. the next logical uh, point in this plot is mm-hmm. when they both uh, get, uh, they team up gangbusters style as uh, Woody Literally, Harrelson yes. uh, explains to us mm-hmm. and then they decide to recruit the uh, the people the proletariat right? yeah on right. the island the, 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 the militia been, yeah. yeah basically yes and they're gonna storm the island fortress or the mountain fortress yes. of mm-hmm. uh, the warlord correct that is like the next thing that's like the, the gonna I mean pretty this. much we've, yeah, we've, there's some smaller stuff in there but you know jumped there. around here and there but I mean that's the next big piece yeah was yeah. there anything that we missed that uh, like stands out to you 
I was like, we should probably talk about that because it was a significant moment or stunt effect. No, because we go back to um, uh, Ron Perlman brooding a lot. And mm-hmm. philosoph- there's a lot of philosophizing in this movie. Too much. There's quite a bit. It is a two yeah, hour long much. movie. And anytime we are not fighting, we are philosophizing. Well, Those are the two it, modes of this movie. Right, fighting, philosophizing. Whether he's doing it to his henchmen, he's doing it to Demi Moore. And like, they go back to him. And it's just his slow realization is just like, ah, I need to fight more. Like he eventually gets up and he's chopping wood again and all that. So it's just his build up to this big fight. I oddly liked the scene where he's having, where Ron Perlman and Demi Moore are having dinner together. And she's she's, cracking the nuts. She's like really loudly cracking the walnuts because she knows it's bugging killer number two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got. That is fun. I enjoyed that scene. (laughs) She's like cracking them and then dumping it in Ron Perlman's bowl for him to eat. Mm -hmm. And she's just like staring at the henchman while she's yes. doing because she knows it bugs him. Yep. And she knows that she's yeah. on the side of power in this situation. Yeah. And he's like, because I guess that's his character <laughs> thing is he's basically uh, killer number two is safeguarding the empire. Yeah. But they're always. He's doing all the dirty work. It is. Yeah. And then we there is a moment where there is that temptation where, where him and Ron Perlman are talking yeah. to each other and he gets that. He, you know, he's like, do you want to tr- take your shot? Right. Do you, you want, want to try you want to be a shot number at the one? title? Which, like, yeah. Rick said that in the first Lethal Weapon, didn't he? Talking to Gary Busey on the front lines, like, want yeah. shot at the title. Yeah. <laughs> like he does. And then, right, you know, uh, Killing Number Two's hand shaking over the edge of his sword. And he's like, I could take it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he decides not to. Did he decide not to because he was sitting there going, like, well, these other guys are coming. And so we're going to see how this works. And it's very possible right, that they I may could be do it standing for him right and then yeah. he could take over. At a certain point, so it's like, mm-hmm. I can't do it now. I'd love to. So the, the bad guys are sequestered in their fortress, and they're yeah. like, okay, everybody's coming, and so we're yeah, ready for them. Uh, it, it was interesting to me that they were prepared for them with their doppelgangers, as I think you spoke <laughs> of before. Was, yeah, yeah, this, this was, was funny. This was like when you play a fighting game, and like you choose Sub-Zero, but then you still have to fight Sub-Zero. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. The shorts are a different color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It Yoshi is. fights but it is nice. samurai swordsman. Right, yeah. this is like killer and, like uh, three and four. Like it is, it, it kind of proves the the might of our main characters and that they have to fight themselves. And when the, once they get to a certain level, because we are the most powerful, like, and we could probably mm-hmm. take him down. This is why we have yeah Ethan Hawke. I mean, that's what they're going. <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, Josh Hartnett has to fight Ethan the guy Hawk's who dressed just movie. like him, who fights the exact <laughs> right. same fighting oh, yeah. style. I, do, I like the um, uh, there's a running theme of Josh Hartnett who has apparently given up smoking as a cowboy. Yeah, and he's so he's got the first instance of this. He's got he's like a he's got a plastic cigarette that he. Like Colin, who just dropped yeah. right there. He's got a plastic cigarette that he just pretends to smoke, but the first time he busts it out, Woody Harrelson lights it up for him. He's like, yeah. oh, oh, I've yeah. burnt the end of your plastic yeah. cigarette. <laughs> but I like that theme where he gets, where as he's, they're gearing up to fight their doppelgangers, um, uh, doppelganger yeah. cowboys smoking a cigarette. Not Ethan Hawke, who not, we all thought yeah, might not, be Ethan yeah, Hawke. Not, not Ethan Hawke. Yeah. Hawk. It's he, like it's like he's got a cigarette for him. It's just he like, offers yeah. it to him. Yeah. He takes it, but then he just puts it in his pocket. Right yeah. for later. And saves it's it for like, later for yeah. victory. Yeah. It is. It's a uh, it's a good moment. I like that little thing for him in this mm-hmm. movie. Well, that leads us, I guess, to the like big, exciting climax of the movie. Then, uh, yeah, so where they have up. to the both. Evil. Yeah, both heroes enter like, the room, and Killer Number Two is there. Right. But Josh Harnett just like, oh, this is your guy. I'm going to go yeah, get mine. See, that's what <laughs> yeah. I was like. Why, you could both tack, uh, tackle this one guy. No, right? It's no, like, you what? handle on your own. Because you got to do this. Yeah. Honor. It's, honor and per- it's personal. Yeah. It's and honor, it's so did Josh Hartnett go like, well, Yoshi is more uh, capable of handling this guy. I'm just going to go to the next room. And it was, you know, it was like, well, it's probably like, like well, you've the... got the sword. So you right. you take this, this, this one and I'm going to take my shot with the big guy. And again, this feels there's a very video game ish feel to this. It's just like certain you bounce back and forth between certain characters who are more adept at killing a boss than the other character would be. Yeah. So they handle it. While yeah, you but what? Uh, Josh Hartner walks into the room, and I guess they're trying to to you know show that um, Ron Perlman, wily old dog, still has the upper hand. Yeah. And, you know, because he's the woodcutter, and so he he whacks people with a. With an axe, a flying axe. Really good looking axes. I like these axes. Mm-hmm. So he like takes Josh Hartnett almost out, you know. Yeah. And then there, it, the movie just spends a great amount of time with Ron Perlman trying to get to the question that we're He hasn't anyone about. to talk to for years, Colin. Yeah. Who is this man who is troubling me so much? What is your reason, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. like I said, we covered it earlier. It's like, uh, you killed my father. Yeah. Prepare yep. to die. But I mean, like if... <laughs> 
I mean, if we're if we're going into the details on this, it would make sense that he doesn't tell him who he is because he's like, well, this is kind of my my leverage. Like it's throwing him off kilter that he has no idea who yeah. I am. Yeah. yeah, you know, I I don't think that's what they were going for, but that's but do we need the logic I put I into guess, it? You know, did you need to know it? I mean, would it yeah. give you like an extra? It depends on how much. I you mean, enjoy when it, you find out, you're like, point. oh, it's that guy or something, or like, or you know, you do it like uh, those classic westerns where you know, you know, the Josh Hartnett. You know, his dad was. I, I think so. I would have liked it better if they if he just hadn't told him. And yeah. He still had that conversation with Woody Harrelson was like, I knew your dad. Yeah. And he was he was a good guy. Like something like that. Like just that the, still, yeah. right. still that, have that like, conversation. Right. But he makes it he makes it known that it is personal, but he doesn't give him the specific information. Right, yeah. Right. He so just never Ron, tells him. It, it would be better because yeah. then Ron Perlman dies never in, knowing in yeah. questioning without mm-hmm. ever knowing. Yeah, I would have liked it better like that. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Right. yeah, something mm-hmm. to Still, give yeah. it a little bit of a yeah, something a little more. Uh, killer number two uh, meets his demise uh, after beating the shit out of you. Now, this seems yeah. like was killer number two overconfident at a certain point. That's why he got like he was too celebratory of his almost beating Yoshi because Yoshi gets the shit beat out of him. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he was relishing in that moment where he says yeah. You're that that breath away from death is that like right. Sweet, he is enjoying that. That is that like earlier. sweet moment. So he's, he's like, like enjoying that, seconds. and he's too cocky because he's not paying attention yep. to the fact mm-hmm. that Yoshi's still alive. I, mean, it's just, I always kind of, um, you know, what else are you going to do? I mean, it works yeah. for the story and everything. You almost don't like that because you're like, well, you're the better warrior. You should win. But then, you know, he takes, he, he lets his guard down for a minute. And yep. It's, it's always, uh, yeah, hubris and pride. Hubris, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. At the end, always down, gets I guess. him. And he impales him to a tree with his sword, so that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's um, <laughs> there's Always car chases in this movie. There, oh. uh, there's some action scenes. There's Josh Hartnett running across. This is what fills the time. Two hours. Yeah, yeah. Leaping and losing his hat, and then his hat like magically somehow yeah. reappears. I did like that little around. car chase where the red and black half cars are chasing them. The and like yeah. a Volkswagen yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's all fun. CG. I mean, it's not like the cars aren't really really driving anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just right. you know, or, or if nothing else, they filmed these cars from top down and then took them from that on the green screen and move them through you know mm-hmm. these animated areas and everything so i guess you know and i'm thinking there's a scene that eventually takes place in the circus where josh hartnett who has a fear of heights apparently oh, where yeah. he has to get on a, a, this trapeze. Not a trampoline yeah tra- yeah, trapeze. trapeze yeah that goes to a trampoline if any fight, fight scenes could have been cut out i think that one could have been cut out really that's the, the trampoline one. Cut. Yeah, I don't think it did. A trampoline fight scene. There are so many other idea. fight scenes that are just like slapping each other's wrists in a room, and you're going to go with the trampoline ones on uh, your Maybe now? it's this placement in the movie or something, but I think once we got I mean, to that point, yeah. I'm just like, we could, we should move. We should keep moving. The momentum yeah. of this movie stalls out constantly, and, think, um, yeah, and that's think, the problem. Like, I like yeah. the scene. It's placement I don't think is necessary at this point. I can agree with that. Is yeah. the yeah. momentum, <laughs> is it, uh, you're saying it stalls out. Uh, I think I agree with you that this does happen. Is it the, uh, is it the fight scene? I mean, is this it- movie so redundant? It does the same thing mm-hmm. over and over again. It's very redundant. So fight, what- monologue about violence. Fight, monologue about violence. Like for two and a half, mm-hmm. two hours and five so, minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying, trying to think. Like, I mean, have you seen a movie that's done this? well or is it all like is this just the curse of it it's like we're gonna have i think there's a lot you can cut out of this movie the fight scenes right have to be i think in order for you to uh you know like they have to escalate in uh their excitement level right Mm -hmm. like the every subsequent fight scene has to been be better than the one that you saw before the john wick movies do that really well yes okay so i was thinking about that a lot when i was watching those movies always worn up themselves and wait like it's crazy to think that that franchise just started with a guy that was like mad they killed his dog that his dead wife left him and now it's become this whole continental universe of assassins you know yeah But but this one the problem I think is that like we know early on these are the two best killers, right? And they've now teamed up, and so everybody that you throw in front of them, they're gonna beat them, right? right. And yeah. For and, like two hours, right? Yeah. Plus, and we don't get too much personality from these killers on this Mortal Kombat list. Either. No, they're mm-hmm. not fully fleshed out people. They are just killer whatever. The mm-hmm. killer number two is you know the one who's given the most storyline. So. Because we spend so much time on them fighting them, by, by the time we get to the trampoline one, I'm just like, I don't know the guy he's fighting. I don't necessarily right. care. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it is just another 
obstacle that I, I'm pretty sure he's going to get past. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, what are we like? We should probably be moving faster at this point. Farther. Because, I mean, I guess, you know, then you start looking at like, well, okay, the choreography of the fight sequences. But, I mean, I'm not seeing anything that like, st- I mean, the setting, trampoline. Okay. You're right. Like, sure. well, okay. Unique. Like, unique setting, you know, or it's got a unique backdrop because they're on a, mm-hmm. you know, there's a giant moon in the background. You I know, mean, that guy, that guy who's fighting was doing backflips and shit, so that's pretty he cool. He was you very know? good at that. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. I, you got to be doing that for a lot. I appreciate the art form yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's nice. Because they all, scenes. I think, maybe do have different fight styles, but I think that's the thing. If you're not like really up on if you don't know martial Kumite. arts this right is, yeah, yeah this might be, this yeah. be a little like because uh. i think a martial arts aficionado might view it and go like okay this one they're fighting this style right. and this Monkey one style. they're doing this mm-hmm. yeah. yeah right because i think at some point there are guys who are uh, the circus guys are like, right yeah that, different style more flippy more you know yeah and, and, and it's like but these guys you know uh yoshi and 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 the drifter are able to Basically, their styles are able to take down everything else. And the way, uh, I think the other thing was like the way Josh Hartnett defeated the trampoline guy didn't seem like it didn't seem like he did a lot. Did he was getting his ass it? beaten for most of the. I, it was cut a punch. back and he it was, was like dead. A punch I thought and then he was on down. The, yeah. Like I say, it wasn't an exciting thing. Like yeah. It didn't really build up to a climax, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It didn't build up to a good climax and defeat of the character. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering why the whole scene was technically in there. Mm. It seems super. You guys seen mm-hmm. those uh, the raid? Movies. I've you seen the first the one, which is kind of really similar to uh, Judge, Dredd. Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd, very yeah, yeah. similar. But I haven't seen the second one, but I've seen the first one. It has it. the second one did have that kind of. I mean, it's a bigger. It's like the Godfather, you know. <laughs> right. But it did have escalating, and I think that is you got it. Something that you have to see, sure. John, as a filmmaker. These movies, every fight scene has to be better than the one before it. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it's just. There's a bunch of kicking and punching. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that can, for some people, wear uh, yeah. thin. Yeah. After it becomes a redundant. Yeah. It wears yeah. me out. Yeah. If it's just that, mm-hmm. so you really got to do it. But you also got to like, don't start epic at the bottom and then go up. You like start a little smaller and you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. naturally go up naturally in the raid. Naturally, <laughs> yeah. naturally build up that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But you know. The baseball bat you girl and the what was the other Wasn't guy? There a hammer guy? Hammer guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hammer guy and baseball bat girl, or vice versa. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Are at the end. They're always mm-hmm. right yeah. before the bat, big bat. Oh, you want to fight again with hammers? I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess um, we're going to tell you whether or not it wore thin on us, or if we loved it. Uh, we're going to go around That's the table. It. That's all we got. And yeah. tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Boonraku. Uh, but first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I feel like he came from a universe like this movie, right? You could totally see an Igor just well, like... Well, different parts of him came from different worlds. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so just others. like how this movie's East and West coming together, Igor is all parts of everything. Well, there's East, yeah. West, and then there's Underground, which Under- is Igor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see him in like the fighting stand. Yeah. Ready to go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, style yeah. Be. He'd be very slimy. He'd use that to his advantage. He would, he would yeah, yeah. to the ground yes. level, I think. Is what, Low yeah. center of gravity. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe he zips to side to side. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Over here. Oh, I like his skin. Yeah, I've seen that character. He jukes you and dodges. That's his power. He's got to use his movement to his advantage. Yeah. He's not big. Yeah, he's like Yoda. Yeah, and punches slide off him. Yeah, because he's so slimy. He's so slimy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> we totally got this. Oh, I'd yes. love to choreograph this fight, Igor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or X at Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram or threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Boonraku, Michael Whitaker braved the storm and wrote in 
about Boon Raku and said, mm. I thought I had never heard of this until I saw the cover art, and it definitely looks familiar. What's the poster for this? That or the cover looks just like every other late 2000s action movie. Uh, That's yeah. legit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. See, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. even Find know what I'm very curious like. about oh, the official. Oh, like, this remember? is... It, it looks, looks like Zombieland. It looks like Zombieland. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's even yeah. the same font and same color font oh, as Zombieland. Yeah. Yeah, I would never... I, if you hadn't sat me down tonight to watch this, I would not watch this movie. I think Train to Busan is a similar poster, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. It has that look to it. Yeah. Uh, last week we watched a movie called It Follows, oh. and Andrew Volstorff uh, wants us to know that it's not an STD warning film, and directed us toward an essay, video essay. Uh, that I think was if you about the, to the episode, sir. misunderstood yeah. meaning of It Follows. Yeah, I said I said that was a yeah. reductive way to look at that she movie. Did. Yeah, okay. I, I really to it. that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what McKay said. It's like yeah. that's I was like, it's actually it. about social anxiety. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That's yeah. part of it, but it's also there's more to yes. it. Yes, yes. I think is what we said. Yeah, me thinks so, the episode, sir. You it's like me thinks you episode, did not listen. <laughs> well, I think he's reacting to our social media post. It was basically yeah. like the only thing he's reacting to. Yeah, okay. Listen to the episode next time before you post your video. Well, Kryptonian Orphan definitely did listen to the episode and says, "God bless." Bless you, ladies. Even when trying to escape a supernatural killer, y'all will still put on some three to four inch inch heels Seriously. and go for a run. But great episode, gang. And by the way, the director addressed the gay lesbian scenario and oh. said that it wouldn't matter if it were boy, boy or girl, girl. It would still get you. Okay, okay. I'm glad he addressed that because that's a very important thing. Right. Thank that was a you. Big question, yeah. But Sean had a question of well, because exactly we thought it might be in the jizz. Of, yeah. I, I, I right. had the question. Yeah. Yeah. Two sides. I had the, question. I had the question. Right. I had yeah. lots of questions. Right. Yes. We may have gotten like two. We got very trying questioning the science. We, we of dug it. deep in that. We dug <laughs> deep into that <laughs> hole. I had major questions. Yeah. Uh, the week before that, I think we watched Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, and Brett Williams wants us to know that it was listed as number ten on Screen Rant's top fifteen greatest made-for-TV horror movies of all time. I and believe then that he has a Saturday Night Freak Show science report. All right, but says, "Well, not much science, but more automotive." Because I'm disappointed that Colin doesn't remember that the Jeep DJ number five mm. were the standard postal vehicle up until 1984 when it began to be replaced by the Grumman LLV. Also, I saw this on TV as a kid when Colin did, and I have a strong memory of it, so I decided to pick it for movie night with the wife tonight nice. as a TV movie. It's free of the gore that she doesn't like oh, in most go. Saturday Night Freak Show play. Yeah, it's yet still disturbing. But yeah, yeah, it's still disturbing and doesn't really feel like a TV movie except for like we it's talked about the fade, fade, to fade to blacks and stuff, yeah, but yeah, stuff it's a pretty good quality TV movie. Yeah, again, we liked it very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. It's a good movie. The Newfeld says, oh. as a kid growing up in Kansas with a cornfield out the back door, when this <laughs> came out, I got to say the movie does farm-based terror better than anyone. It yeah. does. It's. Yeah. I would say it might be a little better than the Children of Corn movies. Like, oh, I think wow. it's... Hi, Kansas. You know? We're Illinois. We <laughs> yeah. also have corn. We, we understand what you're saying. We see you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Mike Welch says, oh, because we were saying that... Uh, it might be the first killer scarecrow movie. Mike mm. Welch says, well, what about Dr. Sin? Uh, you were talking about Dr. Sin and the, the yes, Romney that's Marsh. my dad brought that oh, yeah, up. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's not a killer scarecrow. That's like bootleggers and all that, and they dress up. They and dress as scarecrow. I was okay. sitting there going like, that sounds like Captain Clegg, which yeah. is a Hammer movie, gotcha. which was retitled Night Creatures, yes. Oh, yes. Which, which is based is, on which, the same story. Yes. Which Rob Zombie put in his Halloween movie. Yes. Captain, yes. Captain Clegg and the Night, and the night yes. Creatures. That's a pretty good movie. I, I watched it just this Halloween, Night Creatures. Yeah, and I was pleasantly surprised. Where that inspiration came from. Like, I want to watch the movie right it does look interesting right. do they use a scarecrow i can't remember yeah but it takes a long time for it to show yeah because i think and there's the skeleton sin, outfits too yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah. i remember yeah. the skeleton yeah. outfits from night yeah. creatures but yeah. i think dr sin was like yeah no he was he's that i showed you guys a picture remember yeah. he was like he had the black nose and a white face he was really scary it's like it, they were trying to make him endearing but it made it more scary yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah yeah, no, Night Creatures has the skeleton outfits on horses, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night Creatures was, yeah, it took a little while to get going, but mm -hmm, it was, mm -hmm. it got there. It's a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, several weeks ago, we oh. watched a movie called Mausoleum. Oh, and, yeah, we did. Uh, oh. Travis Legler writes in and says, I miss having people like John Carl Beekler in Hollywood. He did the effects for that movie. Mm -hmm. He was a down-to-earth guy and always treated people with kindness and tried to help them look their best. Side note on your physical versus digital media views. I tend to go with both because many times I do prefer physical because often older movies get a digital release, but their special features 
uh, are always, oh, but not their special features, and that always leaves me disappointed. Yeah, that does happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you're a film aficionado collector, then, you know, you got to go with the digital or the physical media to get your special features. Right. And let's just mm-hmm. burn it and you have it on digital. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, each of you, for writing in. We yeah, greatly we appreciate, really appreciate it. it. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Boonraku, starting with Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Boonraku? I I think that there's stuff I like here, and I re- I do love love an East versus West type movie. <laughs> And I love like any sort of Western kind of vibe. I'm always into, I love a neo-Western. I love a pseudo-Western. I love any flavor of Western. And I do think this is some of the best work I think I've seen Josh Hartnett do. I mean, and uh, the dude had no easy task. He had to do a bajillion fight scenes and some on trampolines and all sorts of shit. He had more sexual chemistry with Gact than he did (laughs) with Kate Beckinsale. He did, yeah. And I'm like, like, okay, like I get it seeing this movie. I get the why people like him after seeing this mm. movie but wow it took me until seeing a movie in 2010 to get it you know like um but i and i think like this kind of stoic mystery man that just blows into town is like work works best for him for sure i think it helps he has a hat on too so you, if there is a bad hair situation it's covered up yeah. um but then he does the hair fluff thing yeah he does sexy. but yeah. yeah and like the mustache and goatees it's a good look for him it works um but yeah, a lot of his performance is just kind of gravelly one-liners and like looking to the side and squinting a lot. So, I mean, it's not, that part's not a heavy lift. It's all the choreography that is intense. Um, Gact was, I was like, first of all, this man has the most beautiful hair I've ever seen in my he's, entire yeah, life. He's, and he's, he's a, Yeah, I was he's like, wow, man. he is, like, I just like mesmerized by it, what he looked like. And, I, and that's why I was like, he has to be famous. Mm-hmm. No one looks like this and is not famous, you know? <laughs> and it adds um, to like animes that I, or uh, yeah. even comic books that I, mangas, I guess, comic books that I've seen where like, the uh, the male protagonist of like if they are Japanese or anything the the male Beautiful. female look the, they are they they always they share a lot of similarities yes. in that look it's like an yeah. androgynous yeah, yeah, yeah he's that happens a gorgeous lot. He fits yeah that kind mm-hmm. of perfectly yeah and I thought he was good in this movie too especially for someone that I know nothing about I right. thought he was good too there's a lot of good shit here I think it just also rubs up against stuff I really can't stand and so I don't know I'm on the fence the with Scott this Pilgrim one of it all. because the Scott Pilgrim of it all <laughs> and the just redundancy of it all just repeating the same kind of narrative beats over and over again until we run out of time is really makes it hard for me to digest like I just I felt found myself bored at certain points because it felt like people were just pontificating about the same point we had already heard three or four times and i mean i love ron perlman i love i love all the stars in this movie and i love how weird this movie is and the big swings it takes in this you know i think i said last week that um sometimes it follows kind of falls into like style over substance i think this movie is a hundred percent style over Mm -hmm. substance like in every sense of that and i don't know if that's like a condemnation or not because like i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i think it's totally okay to have movies that are just fun style movies but as soon as we hit the you killed my father and I got to defend my honor, I ooh that really put me over the tipping point of no, 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 no. Because like I've heard these stories a million right. times. And if that's all we're getting, then why am I spending two hours and five minutes watching a bajillion fight scenes to get to the same point I've seen a million times in a million other movies? I wish it had something else to deliver at the end, but it doesn't. Would it have been better if that moment when they walk into killer number two's room, mm-hmm. if they look at each other and he's like, well, he stole my dad's necklace. He's like, well, he killed mine. Yeah. He's like, all right, you go. Yeah. Like, that would have been funnier. Yeah. If they would have acknowledged how, how, yeah. how, like, stereotypical it is, mm-hmm. right? That would have been funny. But this movie mm-hmm. doesn't have an interest in doing mm-hmm. that. I think I got to not recommend it just because it did tread into Scott Pilgrim territory too much for me. And it just kind of was sensory overload at points without any substance to back it up. But, like... This is such a unique movie and a weird movie that, like, I can't say it. Like, I mean, we rattled off all the things that were similar, but still, like, I'm glad this movie exists. And if you like it, I don't, like, I, I understand why you like it. So, like, it's like a soft not recommend because mm-hmm. there is a lot to like. And, like, I feel bad not recommending a movie that is so weird and so out there because, like, it takes risk in a movie like this financially supported and released, right? So, like, I want to support this type of filmmaking. This one just rubbed me the wrong way in a few aspects. So, like, I don't hate it. I just, there's a few tweaks I think you could make. You cut 30 minutes out and reduce some of the, like, I mean, you could cut Demi Moore out of this movie entirely. I feel like you could cut a lot of these fight scenes out and just cut out the fucking giggling theater kid, you know, cults that's coming in to fight them and just get to the point 
a little faster. Um, so I'm going to not recommend it, but I don't know. Over time, I might change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I could see myself in like a year or two from now being like, you know what? I was wrong. I, I could see that happening because that has happened with other movies on yeah. the Freak yeah, Show. We've all done so that. yeah, we've all oh, done yeah. that. There's been times where I've sent messages to the group chat, being like, "I would let it be known that I retract my not recommend for that movie, <laughs> yeah. and I was actually wrong." Like that's happened before. So stay tuned. I might change my mind. Yeah. But for right now, not recommend. Uh, Sean, what do you think? Uh, you made a lot of good points. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of re- I think a lot of redundancy mm-hmm. in this. Um, I get maybe they're hoping the style gets them through it at mm-hmm. certain points. But yeah, there are certain points where we just say, "All right, we should be getting towards the end of this movie faster." Mm-hmm. But I do like a lot of this movie. I like the the stylization of it. Um, the actors I think are doing for their maybe being in in very familiar and stereotypical stories and characters, I think they do a lot with it. Um, I, I like watching those actors be those characters. Um, I think Woody Harrelson's just, I think he's having fun in this movie being that character. I like his character, Josh Hartnett as well. Um, a lot of it is very familiar as, as far as story goes. And for a two hour movie, that can be a bit much. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot there. You're just like, all right, uh, I've seen it. It's familiar. We could cut a little of this out, but it's still like I love the style of it, and I think it's a uh, it's a good story, and the actors really help it a lot. Um, if there weren't, I guess maybe so many familiar faces in this, I might give it a lower grade. But I think everybody did really well. Um, I had some bad vibes at the bad cool world vibes at the beginning <laughs> that really almost threw me off on this thing. So cool world is your Scott Pilgrim, I don't basically. Like cool, okay, yeah, it yeah, is, yeah, yes, cool yeah, world is yeah. my Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. I do not like. They're cool world. both for me. They're both. Ba- I mean, they're both not <laughs> good. Yes, but I'm, I think I'm the only one on this table that likes Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, so when you get dudes showing up and you know red suits. <laughs> it's uh it's very fun to me so you i like did all it those to the dead heat i did yeah, yeah it was <laughs> holly got it um but uh a lot of it's very fun and um uh, it, it's a, i think it's still a very fun mm-hmm. movie so again overly long and familiar but uh, a lot of it's fun so i'm gonna recommend Bunraku. colin what do you think well I, I didn't bring this up during the 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 when we were talking about it, but like I remember <clears throat> thinking about Woody Harrelson's performance in this movie, he uh, gets served basically by the editor as he's the dog that you cut away to. What I'm referring to is <laughs> yes. uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez when he made uh, El Mariachi, he shot that thing and didn't do any like coverage, right? Because uh, he didn't have enough footage or film in the camera. So he was like, so he shot like a bunch of this stuff with a dog in this like Mm -hmm. dialogue scene. And whenever he had to find like a moment between dialogue to match stuff up, he would cut to the dog (laughs) and George Clooney. And from dust till dawn is like, I'm the dog in this scene, aren't I? Uh, You know, cause he knew the, and I'm like, when you watch uh, Woody Harrelson in this, he's always like reacting to something that somebody else is doing. Cause they just like, they have to cut away to something. Right. And so they cut away to him like all the time. He's like, it because it works. Cause I feel like, I feel like he's the only sane person in this movie. So like his reactions are just like, I'm going to see how this plays out. Yeah. Like I, I, it works for but me. But that's, I guess that's yeah. why you hire a professional actor. You yeah. know, it's like because they know he's, that. He's uh, okay, everything. I'm the cutaway guy. I just have to react to stuff. Somebody and it's closed like the still... door in a car, and he had a great reaction. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a little strong. Like he's yeah. doing so much with with what he's. You remember all his yes. reactions and stuff because basically that's his role in this. Yep. Um, I think I'm the only person here tonight who saw this movie twice. This is my uh. second go through. The first time that I saw this movie. I absolutely hated it. Uh, it, I, it was like, you know, I think I was intrigued by that era of, um, you know, CGI virtual world yeah. experimental movies. And so I gave it a shot and it was an alien object to me and it felt redundant. And I was like, I can't, you know, and I think I lost the thread like well into it, but finished it. And by the end of it, I was like, that was all style and no substance. But something has changed in the intervening years. Now we're talking 13 years. I've seen more (laughs) movies. And I'm like, oh, I know what this guy is directly referencing. And it's all these Chinese Kung Fu movies that I've been (laughs) watching over the years. And I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good Kung Fu movie. You know, like this time through, I was not bored at all. And I was like, oh, okay, these are the archetypes. I was like, I got it all. 
And that's why I was kind of setting this up. I'm like, I think maybe, you know, just listening to you guys, like, I think you need to have that behind you. Yes. And then you can go into it and you're like, oh, yeah, no, this is that beat that you usually get. How are they going to do it? Okay, that's interesting. How are they going to do this? And so it is, it's a genre of film uh, that they're basically just kind of, you know, taking their uh, swing at with this, you know, uh, very bizarre, very cool um production design but yeah i do think ultimately it's still like an overlong movie mm-hmm. yeah i mean the narration yes. is like incessant and it's like you don't need that uh the fight scenes as i said the criticism is that they don't improve upon themselves i think overall i would still recommend it if you're interested in uh you know kung fu. if you like kung fu movies i think you'll like this movie uh even westerns as well yeah and what, yeah yeah time. yeah for sure. So I don't know. I mean, ultimately tonight, I'm I'm shocked that because I went into it going like, oh God, this I thought you sucks. were going to hate this. I'm I thought I was going to hate it. And I'm surprised. I was like, no, I actually don't. It's like, OK, you know, so I'm going to say uh, I would recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah. So um, how did you come to this movie? Huh? A friend of mine recommended it to me. Okay. I was I told him I was trying to pick a movie for this week and he was like, I got one for you. It's called Bunraku. And I looked at the trailer and I was like, well, that looks like something. <laughs> so and then I, I read a little bit about it and I was like, you know, what? I think we need to watch this. I think it's something different from what we usually talk about. And Indeed. sometimes we need that. Um, I like to break things up a little bit. So, yeah, I didn't. I, I read some of the reviews going into it, too, and some people, like Colin's first experience, really hate this movie. And after watching it, I'm like, it does get a little boring and redundant, but we've seen so many horrible movies, and I'm like, I don't hate this. Like, what are you <laughs> no, talking we've had, about? We've, we've hated movies. Yeah, like, I've hated movies. I don't, I don't know. But, um... No, I think everyone, I think everyone's right. I think, stylistically, this is a beautiful movie. They're, they're I like that they're trying things. I like that there's so much creativity in this movie and a lot of it might be pulled from, from different things. Um, I, I think he saw 300 and Sin City one too many times and really pulled from those. Um, but I think it's, when did Kill Bill come out? Uh, oh, I think it'd go for this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Three. Really? Something, like Something like that. Something like that. But I mean, that was basically like the other big, like you know, Western audiences mm-hmm. saw, yes. you know, yeah. The, that, yeah, that influence, yeah, in a or big movie. Uh, yeah. Crouching Tiger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. actually, yeah, right. There's that a lot of the, yeah. The door, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, like creatively, I, I think this is a really cool movie to experience. Um, it it is a it is too long. It's it does slow down. I wish I would like to see the version of this that is that's polished that there's more developed in the characters that there's more attention given to the story that there's more attention given to the choreography i think just small things like that to have like bring someone in to make these edits during filming i think it could have been a really cool movie i think it could have been i think they could have gone harder with a lot of these things like i wanted more from killer 2 with his like dance style of fighting mm. i was like i wish they had gone hard with that because that would have been really funny and really cool like that could have been something oh, set the music like, yeah like because there's there's definite like there is a tempo and everything he's doing like there's specific yes. steps but it doesn't play like i think they wanted it to i think they could have gone harder with that um so stuff like that i, I wish they would have done more with maybe cut back on the video game stuff and pay more attention to that <laughs> <laughs> it would have been really cool um I was bored for a lot of it oh. and yeah, I know I'm, I'm having a tough time with this one because creatively speaking, I think it's a cool movie for you to experience for you to watch, mm-hmm. but I don't know that I would tell someone to sit through it for that. It's kind of how I feel. Yeah. Also, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause it is pretty boring. I think the people you tell us sit through it would be like, ah, I great. mean, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I think especially watching it by yourself, I think would be even more boring. I think yeah. experiencing with people makes it more tolerable. Sure. Um, I think I'm with you, Michaela. I think it's it's a soft. Yeah. See, what, see, Sean, yeah. you say that, but it's a 50 50 split here. It's decline. a freak show. So it's, it's a soft <laughs> yeah. decline. It's yeah. it's not like, oh, don't watch this. So it's also like, eh. 
You're just yeah. you're just pushing it away across the table. Maybe just like <laughs> see the highlights. Yeah, is there know, a highlight like, reel on YouTube you yeah. can watch or something? Watch the yeah. opening Boonraco sequence. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I don't know. There's That's some cool there's some cool stuff. There's some cool visuals in this, but do some laundry for a half yeah. hour late in the game. Mm-hmm. Come back yeah. to it and be like, oh, all right, I know where we are. Yeah, and then that's you're good. True. Yeah, it's a soft pass. Soft, okay. very soft. Okay, all right. So, is that a fifty-fifty split? Yeah, it is. Here, so, I think uh, I was looking up, uh, like you know, so how did this do when it was released? Oh yeah, and I think it it's a not. film festival movie. <laughs> oh no, it I can is, imagine yeah. this didn't do well. Yeah, yeah uh, no, well, the budget was, the budget was twenty-five million. I think like no. it didn't even gross a million. It was yeah, like it a, was nice. distributed. Yeah, I, I think ex- almost exclusively to film yeah. festivals and then which, dumped on yeah, video. Which I didn't even wow. mention this. Uh, Guy Moshi sold the rights to this movie to a company and then that company wasn't going to turn it into a movie so he bought it back oh so he nice. was like no the i want to make this that yeah. Was the scri- yeah the script yeah, sorry yeah yeah. yeah 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 he was like no i want to make this into a movie yeah interesting so I, I like his vision mm-hmm. there's cool stuff there yeah. but, i got to make yeah. another one i suppose that's good yeah. when you go to film festivals you see a lot of movies and like some of them never get distributed really, yeah. i right. remember a Corey feldman movie called the birthday which has never oh, come out oh that God, i saw so you know it's stuff like that but that's <laughs> where this kind of feels like it exists you know right. you go to a film festival and you see it and then yeah. it's lucky that we yeah. have it's seen poster it poster is not helping it yeah i'll, I'll say no. that well, we don't know how to just dist- no, you know market no, right. it, you know it's like, like it's how to go on video what this movie and, is because right. that poster yep. is not yeah. representative yeah. of what you got out of this movie scott woody harrelson did it and you like zombie land yeah yeah uh-huh. All right. Well, uh, thank you for listening this far. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we going to watch next week? We are going to watch Split Second from 1991 <laughs> with Rutger, Rutger Hauer and Kim Cattrall. So <laughs> oh. in the future of 2008. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I don't yes. know this one. Don't yeah. look up anything about it if okay. you can. Split Second. Is it a murder movie? Maybe. Is it a thriller? Maybe. It time travel? Maybe. Oh, okay. maybe we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Just like I'm gonna say, maybe you've we'll seen it. See. No, seen I have not seen it. Okay. I watched the trailer and was like, "Holy okay. shit, we gotta <laughs> watch this!" Yeah, I was lucky Rutger enough yeah. to Howard. see this in the theater. Okay. Like, we're gonna touch on that because I have got questions. <laughs> yeah, all right. okay. Yeah, I remember the experience. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Lots of good teas for yes. this week. <laughs> Split second next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.